Hey, it's Phil Ratcliffe with Rebel Financial, and thanks for tuning in today for another one of our live broadcasts. Today we have Sharon, uh, Sharon Cruz here uh, from Sintero. So thanks so much, Sharon, for uh, joining us today. Sure thing, Phil. Thanks for Absolutely. having me. So today we're going to talk a little bit about something that I had personal experience with. Man, it's been almost 10 or so years ago, um, and that's mentoring uh, local uh, children in our community. So tell us a little bit about you, Sharon, and how you became... Uh, a counselor and then getting into mentoring and being a part of Sintero. All right. Um, my name is Sharon Cruz. I work at Sintero. The uh, grant to fund the program was given to us by ODAVIS at the time, Ohio Department of Alcohol and Drug Addiction Services, mm -hmm. which they've changed their name and become Ohio MOSS, the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. Oh, you've got to have these long <laughs> acronyms, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's hard. Okay, now what do all the letters stand for? I yeah. have to think a little bit, but um, yes, and we got the grant in 1999, so mm -hmm. that's how long the program has been mm -hmm. around. And um, I started with them at that time at 19, in 1999, so it's been going that long and I really enjoyed the well, program. Well now you guys have lots of funding sources, right? Because I was looking on there and there were lots of partners. Well, yes, we do have more partners. We are, the mentoring program, however, is still getting our funding from Ohio Moss okay. and then we get additional funding from the Adam Board. Okay. And then the other funding is for other programs. and it, so with, in Overall, the, Centero yeah. and, you know, sometimes I may get funds from the other ones as well, but that's those nice. are two people major probably ones. want. That's nice for you guys to break it up because people may want to fund exactly what they want to fund rather than just giving it to some big bureaucracy. True. Right. Yeah. Cool. So, how did you become a counselor, and why do you focus on mentoring? All right. Well, I started out as a teacher mm -hmm. in um, health and physical education, and then as my kids got older, I decided to stay home for a while. But then I wanted to come back into the workforce, and I decided to use some of the schooling that I already had in the field of health education. So I got additional uh, education in the field of counseling, specifically chemical dependency counseling. Okay. And I worked at um, Mary Haven for mm -hmm. quite a while, and I got additional training through there where I got my certification as an independent drug and alcohol counselor. Okay. So then I was with Mary Haven for quite a while, and eventually uh, I came to, it was Northwest Counseling. Yep, that's when I first I always started there, yeah. right. And then uh, they merged with Dublin Counseling Center and became Sintero. Cool. So I've been there for quite a while. So you did, did a lot with substance abuse, it sounds like. Now you're mainly in charge of mentoring. So how did that change? Well, actually, when we got the grant in 1999, the grant specifically asked that the person coordinating the program mm -hmm. have a certification in drug and alcohol of okay. some kind, prevention or counseling. Sure. And so that's how I started the program because they needed somebody Probably with the background in that. Probably one of the primary that. causes of people needing counseling and stuff too, right? Either, not necessarily them, but maybe a parent or relative or something like that that causes the situation, right? A lot of times, yeah. and many times when um, there are issues, some, not all the time, but there are sometimes drug and alcohol issues in the background. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell us a little bit about what you guys specifically do and how it helps the community. All right. With mentoring, um, I match kids who are age six all the way through high school graduation mm -hmm. with adults 18 years of age or older who have been carefully screened and they do fun things twice a month for a couple hours each time and they have to agree to stay matched for at least six months. Awesome. And uh, I would imagine a lot better stay a lot longer than that. Oh, well they too. do. Yeah, the majority stay longer than six months, okay. but that's the, you know, that's the minimum requirement. We do require that. Sure. So, is there a large need for mentoring? Is there like a big pool that's like constantly out there? Actually, yes. <laughs> and so, starting in 1999, when the program began, 
we've constantly had a waiting list. And even now, I have about 12 boys on my waiting list mm -hmm. and maybe three or four girls on a waiting list. But for whatever reason, I always have more boys on the list. And it's partly because the majority of people that volunteer to be mentors mm -hmm. are women. And so gotcha. any girls that sign up, they usually get matched fairly quickly because yeah. there are women who are Just there waiting, yeah. to, yeah, to yeah. be matched with. But uh, for the boys, I, I don't get that many men that volunteer to be mentors. I do once in a while, mm -hmm. but it's just not the usual. So that's why the waiting so list is be longer. My next question is, you know, is that need being filled? And it sounds like it is on the, the female side of things and not on the male side of things. Exactly. So you need more men volunteers. Yes, yes. definitely. <laughs> okay. So um, what do the mentors do? just so people can get an idea. All right, well, I tell them to do fun things together, so whatever it is, it involves fun. <laughs> and I try to recommend to them to just do simple, low-cost, normal things that you would do yourself, that you're sure. interested in, and just have the mentee come along. Share the experience. Exactly. <clears throat> so I think sometimes, mentors feel like, oh gosh, I have to think of something really stupendous to do this time we go get together, because last time we did this awesome thing. But, you know, I try to tell them, whoa, no, you don't really need to do that. And as an example, uh, one mentor shared this story with me. She said, after I had been matched with my mentee for a year, mm -hmm. we went out to eat to celebrate. And so I asked her, what was the most fun thing that we did this year? And in the mentor's mind, she thought the mentee would say, oh, that country music singer that we went to see at that outdoor concert, because that was an awesome event. Yeah. But instead, the mentee said, I really loved it when you brought me to your home and we played Clue with your other family members. Yeah, the free and, thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> it costs nothing. I mean, they yeah. already had the clue game. But it was just that closeness, that part of being a family, mm -hmm. and just being in a great setting and doing something so simple but yet fun with a small family group. So that was what she loved best. Awesome. And that's what I tell my people. Let's try to think of things like that to do. Yeah, absolutely. And I do send them in a group email. That's what's like kept me connected to you, because <laughs> I still get those emails every month of like the events and the ideas that you try to give the mentors. Yeah. yeah. And you haven't told me, don't send me those emails no, anymore. I so. still look at them, yeah. That's great. <laughs> I love to hear that. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> yes, I send out an e-newsletter to all of my mentors giving them ideas and suggestions for free and low cost activities. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll just give one more example. Um, one of my mentors called up the mentee's mom and said, you know what, I think I'm gonna have to cancel our outing this Sunday because my wife's car is messed up and I'm gonna have to work on it instead to get it running. Unless you think he might want to help, help me work yeah. on the car, I don't know. And so the mom said, well, I'll ask him. And sure enough, he said, yeah. yeah. So he said, well, make sure he wears his worst clothes because he's going to get dirty. She's like, okay. So he picked up the mentee. They went to his garage. He was under the hood. The kid was handling all these tools and helping a little here and there. And he got out. He found a tire in the garage. He's wheeling this tire around. And he just had the best time. Yeah. And the mom, when I had called her a while later to ask her how the event went, she said, oh, my gosh, he talked about that for weeks. You'd think he went to Cedar Point or something. <laughs> and funny. when he burst through the door, he's like, mom, look, I got grease on me. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Surprising. They, it wasn't a. That's a kid after my own heart. I like to build and work on things too. Exactly. Yeah. And it wasn't something that required lots of planning. They didn't mm -hmm. have to drive somewhere, big deal, or pay out a bunch of money. It was just a simple activity sure. he was going to be doing anyway and brought the mentee along. Yeah. So that's the things. And oddly enough, those are the things that the kids remember. 
Yeah, so. absolutely. That's awesome. That's a good story. That's two good stories. So how do you match mentors and, and mentees together? Well, um, first, after the mentor, of course, has been through all of the screening mm -hmm. and approved, then I look at the mentor's lists of interests, things they like to do, and I go through the kids on the waiting list, their lists of things that they like to do. And I try to match a mentor and a mentee that have at least one mm -hmm. common interest. Often they'll have more than one, you know, several, but sure. at least one common interest. And beyond that, I also try to match a mentor with a mentee that isn't more than 20 minutes from each other. Yeah, I try that's to make good, it. Because that would make it harder. Yeah, yeah, within that amount. Do you ever do anything? like more on your counseling, psychology side of things to say, well, this interest from the mentor would help the mentee even though they didn't list it as something like that would be almost like therapeutic, but it would be just natural. But I don't know, that just seems like something that um, could be a, a aspect of it, but maybe that's too sophisticated in terms of like. Well, sometimes the pool that I have doesn't small. always include yeah. uh, <clears throat> things like that to make that possible. But once in a while, I will see something in the mentor that I think, wow, that isn't necessarily something that the mentee is looking for, but I could see how the mentee could benefit mm -hmm. from that. So sometimes that does enter into my way of thinking. It's not scientific. Like right. You, know, you get the feeling that it would be good for them. Exactly. <laughs> and th sometimes that's part of it is just... Sure. You know, what does my gut tell me about, you know, what I know of this kid and what I know about this adult? Do I think that that will work out? Okay, cool. So, um, we talked about it a little bit, but how long does the relationship, how long, obviously the minimum six months, how long can it last and what's the average, you know? Um, the requirement, of course, as I said, is six months. Mm -hmm. But I would say the majority go at least a year or mm -hmm. maybe a year and a half. And then there are some that just go way beyond that. Like I had mentioned to you earlier, I have had a few kids who have graduated from high school still matched. Wow. And that can be anywhere from six years to, you know, eight. And I think that has been my longest match. It's been an eight-year match. That's and awesome. some people tell me, if I bump into them later, oh, we're still getting together. Wow. And I only monitor the matches up to high school graduation. Mm -hmm. So if they're still staying in touch beyond that, that's yeah. great. That's so awesome. me and my mentee did like two years, and then we're still Facebook friends. So I think we kind of take, like we watch each other and then say comments every once in a while or what so, and then went to his graduation party when he graduated or what so so yeah that, that is cool so what is your ideal mentor like if you could pick someone out um, obviously you need men but right yeah. well I think it is someone who is very open mm -hmm. and open to new things and open to um, new people and going places and very active, willing to try new things and move around and be involved. Mm -hmm. Somebody who is like that, somebody who also is caring and understanding. Um, many of my mentees could use some improvement in their social skills, so it's extra great if a mentor is outgoing and very verbal mm -hmm. because just that helps to bring the mentee kind of out yeah. of their shell for those who are more shy and reserved okay. and I do have a number of kids who are that way yeah yeah okay so um, on the flip side what type of child should like a parent or a guardian or somebody think about they may need a mentor, you know? Well, I think many of the parents that come to us have children who seem to be maybe loners or they're not, they need improved social skills. They don't 
they're having trouble blending with their peers mm -hmm. or in their peer group. Um, that would be, I think they could benefit from a mentor. Mm -hmm. And some uh, youth that don't have a lot of guidance, uh, the parent isn't able to do as much with the youth um, as they possibly could, that child could benefit from a mentor. Mm -hmm. so. And so if a, if a child is having problems with their own peers, an older mentor can help them with their own peers? It's, it's hard to believe, but yeah, it's true, it yes. Yeah. Um, as an example, uh, I matched this one mentee, and when I did the interview with the family, the mentee responded mostly with one word sentences. Yeah. Yeah, no. That was it. Yeah. And so I matched this young girl with a mentor. She was very outgoing and, you know, excited and happy. And after just a couple of years, and they're still matched, I think it's been like six years now, yeah. but um, after just a couple of years, I was talking to the mom doing an evaluation, asking the mom, well, how's the match going? And she answered the usual questions, and then she said, oh, my daughter wants to talk. She wants to tell you. And I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> and she just went on and on. She said, she's like my sister. She's like a sister to me. Um, if it wasn't for my mentor, I would be the shyest girl in my class. And now I'm not afraid to stand up and speak for myself and speak to kids in my class. Is that an only child? No, she had that two siblings. That probably has a cascading effect to the other siblings too. You know? Oh, Maybe. could be, yeah. yeah. But um, yes, she was just, I mean, even in speaking to me, what a difference. Mm -hmm. From one word sentences to elaborating on how this match is so great for her. And that was after she was matched for two years. And then I recently did, you know, a match update this year. And like I said, I think they've been matched for six years. Mm -hmm. So this time she's telling me about doing a class presentation in front of the entire class. And she got some help from her mentor uh, and she did it about sign language. That was okay. The, okay. the presentation that she did. And she said that her classmates loved it and they clapped and she said she even got an A on the presentation. <laughs> so from going to just one word sentences all the way to presenting in front of your classroom yeah. in a very successful manner. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, so I think that is just an example. So how can people get involved if they wanted to volunteer or contribute or whatever the case? What's the easiest, best way? All right, well, if a m parent wants their child to have a mentee, mm -hmm. you can call our location, Sintero mm -hmm. at Mill Run, and it's area code 614-457-7876. And if you want my extension, it's 220. And if, I know, and if I'm out of the office, like right now, you can <laughs> leave me a voicemail and I'll get back to you. If you have an email address, that's also really good because I can email you an application and you can just fill it out and email it back. And that's also true for mentors. Mm -hmm. If you would like to get involved, you can call me and leave me your email address and I can email you an application. And, and you can go to our website. They can just call the main number, which they could direct them to you. Correct. If all else fails, then just remember that Sentero, you Google it, they can get to you, right? That's right, definitely. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming in, Sharon. Uh, you do an awesome job, and I'm sure it's over the almost decades now made a huge difference in a lot of people's lives. And, uh, you know, as always throughout history, you know, children are our future. Yes, always, right? that's right. And the more right. that we can make of them better, and it's gonna make the whole world better. So That's right. thanks for coming in. All right, thanks, Bill. You're welcome. Appreciate it. You guys, thanks again for joining us for another one of our live broadcasts. We appreciate having uh, a piece of your week. Uh, join us uh, week after next because we're gonna be off for Thanksgiving next week. Uh, we're gonna actually do a demo of our new Medicare software, helping people uh, make better decisions as you hit 65. 
Um, it's actually called I-65. And then the week after that, we'll have Brandon Jones on from Brandon, Brandon L. Jones Photography uh, to tell us a little bit about professional photography um, and uh, the work that he does. So thanks so much. Stay warm and happy Thanksgiving.